Cornell Mars Rover has worked tirelessly over the past seven months to design and manufacture a URC ready rover. And this year, we are excited to unveil our new rover, Orion. Our team is broken into eight different sub teams organized by discipline. The armed sub team is responsible for building and designing the rover's robotic arm. The drive sub team oversees development of the rover's suspension, wheels, frame, and electronics housing. The electrical sub team is responsible for developing the hardware required to communicate with the rover and power onboard actuators and sensors. The software sub team handles rover controls, path planning, user interfaces, and computer vision. The AstroTech sub team is responsible for onboard soil delivery and analysis for the science task. The science sub team designs tests and procedures to detect life from soil and rock samples. The testing sub team is responsible for creating system tests to ensure the development of a successful rover. And finally, the business sub team manages teams, finances, web and presentation design, and both public and sponsor outreach. The academic year is split into three development periods, a fall designing phase, a winter manufacturing phase, and a spring testing phase. Because of state and university rules regarding in-person work, we have had limited access to our lab space, machine shop, and rapid prototyping lab. As such, we are currently finishing up manufacturing, but we are on schedule to finish within the next two weeks. The focus of the ARM sub-team this year has been to increase dynamic stability, improve the end effector, and provide better visual feedback to the operators. Using data from a dynamic model of the ARM made in MATLAB, we have standardized our custom cyclical gearboxes, cutting the number of unique parts in half. Mass optimization has allowed us to make the ARM about three times stronger than last year while being lighter. We have completely overhauled the end effector, opting for parallel closing jaws with polyurethane interface material. These changes greatly improve its grip and allow us to reliably manipulate all types of objects. The drives team has redesigned our drivetrain to feature a rocker bogey suspension system. It forces all six wheels to remain in contact with the ground at all times so that the rover can navigate rocks, drops, and steep slopes. We carefully chose high strength low mass carbon fiber as the tubing material connected with structural epoxy at mass optimized aluminum tube unions. The geometry of the suspension is based on a dynamic model created in MATLAB to minimize rollover probability when traversing competition terrain. Our six wheels consist of an interlocking rigid hub and a flexible urethane outer wheel casted in a 3D printed mold. They are powered by Maxon motors that drive cycloidal drive gearboxes we have designed and manufactured. This year the electrical system has redesigned and improved the hardware schema that is responsible for controlling and powering all the systems on the rover. On the rover we use omnidirectional 2.4 gigahertz and 5.8 GHz radios to manage communication between the rover and base station. Our system utilizes both channels to improve communication quality in situations where there is obstructed line of sight. Our central communication board is the hub between controls electrical and software that handles sending commands to each board, and a CAN bus connects the whole network of our PIC32 microcontrollers on custom boards. This year, we also improved the reliability of our modular motor control scheme to run brushless and brush drivers. This, along with the redesign of our central communication board firmware, allows us to support an increased number of motors on the rover. This year, the software sub-team worked on numerous improvements to the previous year's rover. Our autonomy system received major updates in its latest iteration. Among them, our AR tag detection system has been improved to more reliably detect AR tags by employing a spiral search approach when waypoint accuracy is low. Our inverse kinematics implementation allows operators to manipulate the arm in a 3D rendering of its surroundings. We've also included some predefined arm macros, such as a scooping action, to further improve the arm's ease of operability. We also completely redesigned our graphical user interface to enable full control of the rover and all its features. Among its many capabilities are rover module management, autonomous navigation control on a map, and arm manipulation. This year, AstroTech has redesigned our onboard soil and rock analysis system. The rover's scoop transports soil samples from the ground to the mixing chamber. A funnel is used to direct the soil from the scoop to be mixed with water. Vibration motors shake dirt off of surfaces, decreasing the risk of contamination. In the mixing chamber, a crankshaft piston mechanism creates a soil and water mixture. The mixing chamber's three isolated sections prevent cross-contamination. Our next task is to analyze and perform life detection tests. We're currently working on a new spectroscopy system, which we hope will replace RGB sensors in the observation chamber. For both, we have designed light-controlled analysis. As for rock analysis, we have a digital microscope and the filter the science sub-team designs new and specific tests to distinguish between extinct, extant, and no-life environments by analyzing rock and soil samples. Using colorimetric and spectroscopic data, we are able to quantitatively analyze pH, phosphate concentration, and concentrations of various macromolecules in the soil. Using a 3D printed filter wheel, the rover photographs rocks and through the analysis of its average reflectance values, allows us to determine its mineral composition and determine whether the sample came from a place with extant, extinct, or no life. We also have a digital microscope, a nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium sensor, and a carbon dioxide sensor. With a focus on reliability, we have a rigorous testing plan. The team is divided into four task teams for testing, one for each of the URC missions. Each task team lead, under the guidance of the testing subteam, develops and executes an incremental testing strategy gradually bringing the rover up to full functionality. Orion and the rest of the team are just about ready for competition, and we hope to see you in Utah.